had a guitarist friend um, that I'm, I'm just going to name Eli um, because I, mean, I haven't been in touch with him for, for a really long time. And that fact actually speaks to one of the great regrets that I have. Uh, a couple of regrets, actually. Around 2010 or 11, I think, uh, I was camping with my family um, at Mardon Resort out by Moses Lake, Washington. And I get a call from my friend, Eli, who is a, who's a guitarist that I work with on a few projects. So I pick up the phone and I say, you know, what's, what's going on, Eli? How you doing? How are things going? And I just hear the silence, but some faint breathing. And I hear him say, oh, honey, you're dead. And because he had struggled with some pretty strong drugs before in his life, I thought, oh shit, he, you know, he's gone back on something. And he said, she's dead. And he told me that he was now on his way out the apartment that he was in across the street. So once I finally got him to talk, he was saying that he was going to drop his 12 year old son off at his ex-girlfriend's house, the, his son's mother. And, uh, you know, she had struggled with drugs and alcohol before. And I thought, oh, shit, his, his, his ex-girlfriend has overdosed. So I'm thinking, where, where is, uh, we'll call him Michael. Where's Michael? You know, his son, his 12-year-old son. And he said, I'm, I'm going across the street. There's some firefighters here. And I guess across the street, this was in Snohomish, Washington. Across the street, there were some firefighters because there was an event going on over there. And they were just sitting on their truck eating lunch. So I can hear this all on my phone. He tells one of the firefighters, I, I think my ex-girlfriend is dead. And they start putting down their lunch and they're walking with him. And he starts going over to the car to tell Michael. And one of the firemen grabs him and I hear through the phone, you stay right where you are and unless you're talking to the police, hang up. So my friend hadn't even called the police yet before he called me. And what I found out happened after, after Eli was fingerprinted, he called me back and said that there was a, that this, his girlfriend had gone to a bar, his ex-girlfriend had gone to a bar, met some guy who offered to take her home to her apartment because this is where she was found. She was laying on her bed with her pants down around her ankles and there was Tabasco sauce in her eyes and she had ligature marks around her neck. Uh, so the long story short is she had been raped and strangled by this guy who had committed three or four of these similar felonies been convicted of them uh, in the years prior. So he's just out wandering the streets and she, his ex-girlfriend and Michael's mother, was now dead. All this time, Michael's sitting in the car waiting to go up with his dad. So Eli was always afraid that Michael was gonna go up to the apartment and find her overdosed. So Eli made it a point to go in to check first, which is a pretty wise thing. Only, you know, she was dead, but only not of an overdose. A couple of years prior to this event, um, he was interested in my take on God. And I talked to him for a while. Um, I talked to him about the the Jewish aspect of it. That's usually the door I take because it's, it's it will, A, it's true, and B, it's disarming. You know, that Jesus was a Jewish rabbi who practiced Judaism um, is not something people expect to hear. There's also a lot of deep insights you can explain and describe um, if you take that route. Um, I'm not a person who, who thinks that people should become Jewish or the church should become, you know, Jewish at all. In fact, I think it would be the worst thing that could possibly happen. But I do want to, I lay these things out on the table. So I give him, I lead him into sinner's prayer at one point and I give him a Bible, which is something I don't normally do. And for about a year and a half before this event, uh, he would call me pretty much drunk every night and we would walk through um, the Bible, because he insisted on reading it from Genesis to Revelations, because it's a book. Why wouldn't you read it that way? And so all of this had been happening for a couple of years before. In fact, he referred to me as Pastor John, which is not something that I liked at first. Uh, I had no intentions of becoming a pastor. Um, I still don't. But, uh, you know, I let, him call, I let him call me Pastor John. That's what he thought of me. After about an hour after he called me initially, Eli calls me again. I pick up the phone and I hear, hey, Pastor John, why don't you ask your God what the fuck I'm supposed to tell my son? And um, that changed the nature of my faith completely.
not, not, I mean, it wasn't a lack of faith. It was how I approach um, introducing people to Jesus, introducing people to the church. Um, and it really affected me. I mean, it took a couple of years after that for me to understand that God's the one in charge of salvation, that I didn't lose Eli's salvation for him. Um, and I really struggled to believe it. But I'll tell you, it is one of the defining moments in my life and the reason I don't just introduce people to Jesus, lead them in a sinner, sinner's prayer, give them a Bible and send them to church. Uh, not to suggest that doing that is wrong. Um, it's just not for me. If I'm in a relationship with someone, I let that relationship talk about my beliefs because that person's interested in my beliefs. I'm not interested in making sure a person is saved. Um, and one of the things we t we're going to talk about in this series is how the, how two words, the, the church, particularly in the West, have interchangeably used the word salvation and redemption when they don't mean the same things in Hebrew, which is the language Jesus spoke. And that's another video too. Not Aramaic. He, may, he knew Aramaic. He knew Greek, which is the marketplace language. Around, in and around the temple and in Jerusalem, a Jew did not speak, particularly in a rabbinic capacity, anything but Hebrew, because Hebrew is, I mean, there's only 10 million people that speak it in the world today. It is an identity maker, just like circumcision is. 